Hello and welcome to Trojan Talk. I'm your host, Aaron Taylor. My guest today is Eric Weinmayer. He is the guest lecturer at this year's Helen Keller Lecture. I want to thank you for joining us awesome. here today. I can't wait. And opportunity to be here on campus to talk to Choi students about your experiences. And one of the things about you is the fact that uh, you're a bit of an adventurer, <laughs> but uh, people may see the cane in front of you, but yeah. you're also, uh, you know, you're vision impaired. Yeah. So, so kind of talk about how you got to do what you're doing, how you became a little bit of an adventurer. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, in this, in this regard. Well, I guess being a blind mountain climber and kayaker is sort of like being a Jamaican bobsledder, right? You, <laughs> you know, you get noticed. So there aren't that many of us in the world. Um, so I was a teacher for six years and I loved it. I could have taught forever. I taught middle school English and math, but I'd been climbing mountains as a blind person uh, in the summers. I'd climbed Denali, which is the tallest peak in Alaska, and I'd climbed El Capitan, which is in Yosemite Valley. And I thought I could make a life as a, an adventurer. And so, yeah, I've been doing that for about 20 years now. Um, going around the world, climbing, kayaking, speaking, writing books, making films. It's not probably a life that many, uh, uh, what, like venture capitalists would have invested in, <laughs> um, the blind adventuring business, but I've made it work. And of course, one of those uh, peaks you left off, just this little one called Everest that yeah. you climbed, the, the first blind man to climb Everest, is that, is that correct? That's right, yeah, yeah. back in 2001, mm -hmm. uh, an experience that took us three months. And so, you said you climbed those other mountains. So what made you want to tackle Everest? Yeah, because that's tough for, for someone who is completely yeah. in, within their faculty. So. Well, I read a book called The Seven Summits. It was written by this guy named Dick Bass. He's passed on recently, but he was a total stud, uh, amazing athlete that started climbing the tallest mountain in every continent. And then um, I read about that. And, I, you know, as a, as a blind person, I mean, it's not like blindness made me want to climb mountains, but when you do go blind, I went blind in high school, uh, I, y you find yourself in this kind of prison, right? Like sitting in the cafeteria and just like listening to all the food fights and laughter passing me by. And you feel a bit like you're trapped in this prison and you don't want to be there. Nobody wants to be there. So climbing is sort of the opposite of that, <laughs> of that prison. It's the celebration. You're out with your friends and you're pushing your limits and it's all about possibilities and it's all about the beauty of the world you know not that i can see it but i can touch the rock and the ice and the feel the sun and the wind and and uh it's just everything i wanted out of my life in terms of what i defined adventure as and of course a lot of students here at Troy university are familiar with you especially the freshmen here because last year they had to read your book uh, about uh, the Grand Canyon. Yeah, and you talk about uh, you know Mount Everest, but you, you kayak the Grand Canyon as well. <laughs> Another thing that you wouldn't expect you to do, right. but it's something you did. So, how does that make you feel that one that students already have that connection, but they can relate to your story and know your story? Well, it's kind of strange, I guess, is that climbing had become a bit of my comfort zone, right? I'd been climbing for so long and. Then I got this crazy idea to kayak the Grand Canyon, and I didn't know anything about water. You know, I was a mountain person. Uh, well, I made myself into a mountain person, but then learning the landscape of a river uh, as a blind person, like, I, I didn't think I could function, in, let alone flourish in that kind of environment. You know, you have these holes that are like these giant washing oh, yeah. machines that want to suck you down, and giant waves coming and crashing from every direction and these currents that drag you and whip you around and pull you upstream. I mean, it's the craziest environment. And it turned out for me that kayaking was way scarier than climbing. Climbing's pretty slow and methodical, plodding your way up the mountain, but kayaking was so fast, you're riding the energy of the river. It was as much about letting go as it was about sort of taking control because a river is so powerful, you just can't control it all. You know, you gotta let the river sort of shape you in a way. And that was hard for me kind of being, I guess, a control freak, just learning how to let go at the right moment and let the river, so, or trust the river, I guess. Well, I'm excited just hearing you talking about it. I know that the Troy University family is gonna be excited to hear what you have to say and, and we're 
glad that you're here to share your story. Uh, and I know that I'm more interested in, I maybe try to do a little bit of kayaking myself now that I'm mm -hmm. a little bit inspired yeah. uh, to do this, but I want to thank you for joining yeah. us here today. And, and it's been an amazing Good. opportunity to talk with you. Well, so. tomorrow I'm going to be speaking though as well, not mm -hmm. just about adventuring, yes. but really about what this no barriers life sort of feels like and mm -hmm. looks like, because it's so different for everyone. You don't have to climb Mount Everest to get there and, and, and live that kind of life. So, well, I want to thank you for, for joining me today and uh, looking forward to, to hearing more uh, during the Helen Keller Lecture. Thanks for joining cool. us today. Thanks. Thank you. Awesome. And thank you for joining us on today's edition of Trojan Talk.